So is it fair to take benefits from the old to give to the young? Is it something that we should be looking ahead for, Carol? Uh, no, I don't think it is. I don't understand. <laughs> I really don't understand this obsession with the old, all the old people being rich. Oh, you shouldn't live in your big house with the spare rooms. You shouldn't have this, you shouldn't have that. This is all stuff, remember, that people have worked really hard for all their lives and they've paid their taxes all their lives. And so they get a few perks when they're old. The pension that you get from the state now is, you know, it's hardly worth the, the, the paper it's printed on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pathetic. But, and I also don't get this obsession with the fact that we've got to keep helping the young. Why can't they help themselves? <laughs> you know, why can't they? Seriously! No, nobody helped me when I was young. We all made our own way. It was just the way you did things. You rented rooms, you, you slept on people's sofas and floors, and, and no one expected to buy a house straight away. No one! I didn't buy a house or a flat, a tiny flat because I was lucky when I was 31. I mean, why? What? I, if, if, I were on, if I were a pensioner now... <laughs> only, you'll, get to the point, <laughs> you'll get to the point where only dogs can hear you. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I, would, I would be fuming. And, and with politicians especially, they are. They do just keep going on about the fact that, you know, the old are really young, they don't know what they've got, they don't yeah. know how lucky they are. They're not lucky. They've well, worked. This it just is, drives me mad. This is coming from... Um, <laughs> House of Lords Committee, who I'm guessing are probably all sort of getting on a bit themselves, but they've probably got quite a few oh, bits sure, in the bank. Oh, but few, Bob. Their, <laughs> their <laughs> argument <laughs> is that, and actually to quote them, they say younger people are also disadvantaged by an education and training system that is ill-equipped for the needs of a rapidly changing labour market. So their argument also is we have to try and invest in our young to keep our country living and moving and yeah and so we do need to do that I have, I have to say on the flip side of that i cannot bear the idea of the tv license argument for elderly people because i think a television is a complete lifeline to an awful lot of older people mm. yeah. and to have that potentially taken cheap. away to those who can't afford it yeah. Yeah. i think that it's, it needs not to be somewhere else from rob peter to pay paul why does but it, it have to be but it's like any of these stories they they kind of the pendulum is either way over here or way over here. Yeah. And actually, if you look at it in the middle, I think what the trouble is that the political system never does because it can't be bothered. It either just goes right, all of that to be taken away or all of that to be given. Whereas actually, if you look at it, so say for example the winter fuel allowance, if you've emigrated to Spain as a British mm. expat, you probably don't need the winter fuel allowance, do you? Mm. You know, there are a lot of wealthy pensioners who don't need the winter fuel allowance and who would probably gladly give it back, a bit like a lot of people did with child benefit mm. that didn't need it. So I think, you know, that's fine, but, but don't take it... you can't do it... that, though. You can't opt out of it, apparently. No, but that's the problem. Yeah. So the system is never nuanced, you know, and, and as you say, a, a pensioner that suddenly has their bus pass taken away from them and their TV licence, that makes their world even yeah. smaller than it already is. Yeah. And I do agree that we need to train, to provide more training for young people. And, and even if you look at knife crime, you know, a lot of that is rooted in disenfranchised kids that have not had an education or proper training. But you just go right back to the grassroots of what we're doing in our schools. Yeah. Start from there, use our schools more wisely mm. with vocational training. Mm. I mean, it's such a mess. Yeah. But where's all the money going, for God's sake? Yeah. HS2, well, that's where it's going. Well, there's that, and also, you know, we give billions in... Just one example. <laughs> <laughs> we give billions in foreign aid to countries like exactly. India who've got their own space programme. Oh, dear. You know, so there's no joined up thinking and they just sort of they can sit around and have all these committee meetings that they like mm -hmm. but somebody just needs to go right back to the basics and look at it sensibly mm -hmm. yes. so say all of us. See, that's what it, why does that not happen why does it not? Because it's just, too why, easy. Is there, why is there such too a lack difficult. of common sense yeah. amongst people that make yeah. decisions? In it's most countries, it's but like it's first too easy. on the elderly and their TV yeah. licence. It's literally yeah, it's that like was sort a work of insanity. Because I actually do agree that I think a lot of people, young people, do need a help in hand. Yeah. I don't mean necessarily to buy a house. No. I don't mean that. But it, in terms of training or apprenticeships or whatever it takes for them to have a career, yeah. I think to it's keep more about building affordable yes. housing than yes, actually exactly. help. It, you know, we are we do have a housing crisis, particularly in cities, you know. Mm. People can't afford to live in the city. They have to travel in for miles. So it's about building affordable housing.